Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a special edition of Nerdy Notions with Sasha Kaplan. Hello everyone, welcome to this very special edition of Awesome Caught Online with Nerdy Notions. And I'm very happy to be here. I'm very excited because today uh, I'm talking about the MCU. And Michael and I have been doing a series of uh, events talking about the MCU movie by movie. But this time we're gonna give you a general overview of mostly my thoughts over uh, the MCU. Yeah, don't mind me. I'm just the pretty face that's just gonna be sitting here monitoring uh, the panel. He, he's just there. Um, he's a great tech guy though. Um, so thank you so much. Um, so with that, we're gonna talk about kind of the beginnings of the MCU. And the MCU was an experiment. Let's just start right off the bat with that. Like, nobody knew what to make of these films when they were first coming out. Everyone was like, oh, they're going to kind of tie in together. Like, how's that going to look like? Do we have to watch these films to understand these films? And what the Marvel Universe has done, which is unprecedented and is completely magical, is the fact that they've managed to create so many individual stories but they've also blended in these elements that kind of follow along. There's like these little threads that carry you through into the greater movies, whether that be Avengers or Avengers Age of Ultron, and of course, culminating with Infinity War and Endgame, um, where the ultimate threads of everything that has been building up over the previous three phases is just like there and is all unloaded. And this, of course, isn't even talking about all of the little things that the MCU has brought us from Netflix shows to an ABC series called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and now moving on to Disney Plus uh, with all of that content and the future movies that are coming out. Um, the next one is, I think, is, is uh, Black Widow, which is scheduled to begin, I think, what was it? They uh, so they, yeah, it was supposed to be late l this month or late April, because it's now May. Um, but I think it's now taken over the Eternals time slot in November. Yep. And then the Eternals has been moved into Shang Chi's. Chi. Yeah. Everything's uh, time been slot. basically just like moved to the next slot over, um, which kind of makes sense. Um, I think. But also that, helps films at the same time. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It gives these films, I think, a little bit more room. Although I have to say. Uh, I'm not sure about the Eternals being in the Shang-Chi time slot because I think Shang-Chi was supposed to come out in February. Yeah. And now Eternals is going to come out in February. And between you and me, and we've talked about this when we did our Guardians of the Galaxy uh, review, which is that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, like a lot, was an experiment, especially because Guardians of the Galaxy was a lesser known property at the time. So we've gone to an even lesser known property that even hardcore Marvel fans that have been reading comics for years um, were a little clueless about. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. that I think that's going to be interesting to see. Um, it's definitely an experimental film. Um, I definitely have complete faith in Marvel. Um, while some of their movies have not been the greatest in the overall reach of Marvel movie magic. <laughs> Which we've um, reviewed. We're looking at you, Iron Man 3, and we're looking at you, Thor Dark World, and we're kind of squinting slightly at Age of Ultron, but you'll have to listen to those episodes to find out why. Uh, but it's just kind of, it's, it's funny, though, because I think you mentioned it, that even the Marvel movies that aren't as good are still watchable, except Thor Dark World. Uh, <laughs> well, 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 we'll get to it more in depth when we finally get to Endgame, um, but Endgame actually helps flesh out Dark World a little bit. A little bit? It's Not like completely, the... but it helps it a little bit. It kind of reminded us that Thor Dark World existed and did actually serve an important purpose for the greater MCU, but that does not make this movie, the, the movie itself, more watchable as a result. Um, I, I did watch it a little bit after having seen Endgame, and you do kind of learn to appreciate the Asgard moments of it a little bit more, um, especially after Thor Ragnarok. But you kind of wish more of it happened on Asgard, and we got to see more of that world instead of Jane Foster and, and London and Eric Selvig running naked around Stonehenge. I mean, it was funny, um, but there, there were some things that that movie lacked. And But it's it's it's... You know, if we look at the phase one to phase three, you do see 
the difference in these movies. You see how they've grown, how the characters have changed. You know, Tony Stark, I think, had the best character development because he started it and he ended it, so to speak. Um, in the beginning, we see him as this very, you know, he's kind of selfish. He's not a bad person exactly. He's just a very self-centered person. Yeah, he, he does do. He's not self-aware. He isn't. But at the same time, he's not an egomaniac in the sense that, like, oh, everything needs to be about me. I'm the best. Give me all the awards. We see that he actually doesn't care about that stuff. He just kind of wants to do his own thing, and he doesn't care about anything else. And through this journey from Iron Man 1 all the way through to um, the last time we saw him and where we are now in the MCU was Civil War. So we see this journey of him as a person. And I think Pepper's moment in Iron Man 1 when she gives him that box with the original reactor and says proof that Tony Stark has a heart. We see that journey of him essentially proving to Pepper and to all of us that he does have a heart. To the point where he is the character that makes that ultimate sacrifice when that was something that captain america actually criticized him for that like oh you're not the guy who's gonna lay down on the wire and let the guy crawl over him or, or whatever it was you know he's not a guy that makes that difficult sacrificial choice and we see the makings of that at the end of the avengers um but beyond the big characters we also see all of these weaves of other characters that have had their own like mini arcs. Um, I think the best example is Bucky Barnes who went from Bucky to Winter Soldier to what is going on in my head to being a foil to Sam and the beginnings of his friendship with Sam that we will see continue on in uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. And of course my personal favorite will forever be Wanda because I'm a comic book nerd um wanda maximoff is one of my favorite characters um she has been done a little dirty by the mcu um i think she has there, there's so much potential to grow her grow her powers which we saw in endgame and i think and, that's gonna come with wandavision yep, yep, and yep, yep, and doctor yep, yep, strange yep, yep, too so the multiverse of madness yes so um i i think you're, you're you're only seeing like the tip of the iceberg in regards to wanda um, and, and, and in a way, the same could be said about other characters in a way as well. For sure. Um, Rhodey definitely needed more love. Um, we see a lot more of him in Endgame, which is amazing. He definitely gets a little bit more time to shine. We see Hawkeye. You know, every character has this journey. Um, Black Widow also has an incredible journey over the course of these movies because for the most part, we see her as a spy. In, you know, in Iron Man 2, she's introduced. She's like the super slick spy lady. As we get to Avengers, she works for S.H.I.E.L.D. As we get to Winter Soldier, she's now like a, you know, she's a spy who's trying to figure out how to be more than a spy and becomes a friend to Steve. And we see this continue on to the point where her and Tony have, you know, make that biggest sacrifice, that ultimate decision that ends up saving the entire mo universe if not the multiverse yeah and then with um, black widow which is going to come out later this year you're going to see what took place i think like right after civil war i believe it was or leading up to civil war for her i, I don't remember the I story think it's after civil war but i thought it was in between end infinity war and endgame but that, i guess after civil war makes more sense now that yeah I think about I, it. yeah because apparently there's a rumor that tony stark is somewhat in the film so, um, like, but I, I don't remember the story arc. I don't have it in front of me. Um, it's okay. I don't um, have notes because I'm not that special. Uh, one day we will have to show uh, all of the listeners to Nerdy Notions that the, the amount of notes that I take on these movies. Why don't you, um, why don't you show them? We, we're about to, re we're, we're recording this be, be, so, uh, be ahead of time for Awesome yep. Con. And uh, we're actually getting ready to record our Civil War episode. So why don't you show the people your notes, since we are on camera for once. So, ignore my handwriting. This is the beginnings of roughly, let me see here, like 12 pages of notes. And I just see blank pages now. Oh, there's notes. There we go. All the notes. Um... For the most part, these are notes of like plot, 
and like things that I want to take note of, but then there'll be things that I'll remember like, oh, this is like a hinting at this thing or, you know, like, this little piece that is mentioned here is going to carry us over this piece of character development this line is going to be repeated later on um and i think like the funny thing is is like the mcu the more you watch these movies the more you pick up on things that you didn't see the first time or the fifth time or the hundredth time which is just insane um it's unbelievable just re-watching one movie you you see a lot more like hints at the comic book or hints at you know this reference here or that whole 12 the number 12 as it repeats constantly throughout the first like couple phases that we never got an answer for and probably never will and you know future generations of historians and movie analytics will wonder what did the number 12 mean and no one will have the answer yeah um, and speaking of 12 uh that's a good way to uh say we have a few minutes left um it, it's kind of crazy how fast 15 minutes can go. This so, is true. So uh, real quick, we got to talk. Uh, I know a lot of people are, are going to want to hear about it, but uh, the Stan Lee cameos, we could take a quick moment on that because everyone loves Stan Lee, except for you. I. It's not that I, <laughs> I don't hate Stan Lee. I am not as hyperly obsessed with him and his cameos in the sense that other people are mostly because I think that while he deserves like maximum and no more than 50% of the credit um, often time and this is something Marvel has gotten better about in some cases is giving credit to other people but but real quick what Stan real quick. your 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 favorite Stan Lee cameo oh uh, off the top of my head the first one that popped up was uh, Tony Stank in uh the fedex the one War, the yeah. fedex guy and i really liked him in age of ultron where he's like this world war ii veteran uh, which he did serve in world war serve in the army during world war ii and he's like you know the the ale from thor like oh don't try to scare us blondie we got this you know this is an omaha beach yeah that, that was that was the cake yeah um honestly mine's not technically in the mcu um, well, technically it can be. It depends on how you want to determine it. But I like his in Deadpool. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. I, I love not it. in the MCU. It's not yeah. in the MCU. T um, who knows? Maybe they might make it part of the MCU, though, at this point. But um, Because they are keeping Ryan Reynolds. But um, also, uh, I like his Guardians of the Galaxy ones. Those are funny. Yeah. So I, I do like that. More of the Galaxy of the Guardians Volume 2 one over the first one. But with that, Sasha... Where can the people find you on the social medias? Uh, the best way to find me is on my Tumblr, which is geekgirl101.tumblr.com. And, of course, uh, Instagram, which is uh, geekycaptain. All right. And then you can find me on Twitter at, at the Lindenbaum 75 Facebook at facebook.com slash x75productions. And, of course, you can find Nerdy Notions, the podcast, on txhthockey.com slash nerdy dash notions where you can listen to our last two episodes leading up to awesome con online which was captain america civil war and dr strange and then uh, this upcoming week we'll be having guardians of the galaxy vo volume two coming out so thanks for listening and um please tune in when the next episode of our podcast is up on thursday as we'll blast off to the guardians <laughs>